In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, Today is the fifth day of the Novena of St. Francis Xavier, and the theme is Prophets of Justice to Those Bound by Injustice. A prophet is the one who is called by God from within the community in which one lives. This prophet will be sent in turn to a community with a mission of announcing and denouncing, announcing the good news and denouncing the evil and the injustice in the society. A prophet is a courageous man who will speak on behalf of God, speak the message of truth and justice. A prophet speaks beforehand and prepares people for the future. Saint Francis Xavier was also chosen and sent by God on our soil. He came with the, he came with the message of God. Courageously he proclaimed Jesus and his gospel, fighting against all the evils and the injustice of the time, thereby being a prophet of justice. As we prepare ourselves to partake in this Eucharistic celebration, let us ask God's grace that we may become prophets of justice wherever we are to, to those bound by injustice. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. With contrite of heart, let us say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in, in what, what I have, have done and in what, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Stir up the will of your faithful, we pray, O Lord, that striving more eagerly to bring your divine word to fruitful completion. They may receive in greater measure the healing remedies of your kindness bestows. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Apocalypse. I, John, saw an angel coming down from heaven having great authority, and the earth was made bright with his splendor. And he called out with a mighty voice, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. It has become a dwelling place of demons, a haunt for every foul spirit, a haunt for every foul and hateful bird. Then a mighty angel took up a stone like a great milestone and threw it into the sea, saying, So shall Babylon, the great city, be thrown down with violence, and shall be found no more. And the sound of harpers, and minstrels, and flute players, and trumpeters shall be heard in thee no more. And a craftsman of any craft shall be found in thee no more and the sound of the milestone shall be heard in thee no more, and the light of a lamp shall shine in thee no more, and the voice of bridegroom and bride shall be heard in thee no more. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, and all nations were deceived by thy sorcery, after this I heard what seemed to be the mighty voice of a great multitude in heaven, crying, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and power belong to our God. For his judgments are true and just. He has judged the great harlot who corrupted the earth with her fornication, and he has avenged on her the blood of his servants. Once more they cried, Hallelujah, the smoke from her goes up forever and ever. And the angel said to me, Write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let your response be, Happy are those who are invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. Happy, Happy are, are those who are invited to the, the wedding feast of the Lamb. Cry out with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before Him singing for joy. Your response? Happy, Happy are, are those who are invited to the wedding feast of the, of the Lamb. Lamb. Know that He, the Lord, is God. He made us, we belong to him. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Your response? Happy are those who are invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. Go into his gates giving thanks. Enter his courts with songs of praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. Your response? Happy are those who are invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. Indeed, how good is the Lord, eternal his merciful love. He is faithful from age to age. Your response? Happy, Happy are those, those who are invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. Kindly rise for gospel acclamation. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Watch at all times, praying that you may have the strength to stand before the Son of Man. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. 
and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that the desolation has come near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let those who are inside the city depart, and, no, and let not those who are out in the country enter it. For these are the days of vengeance to fulfill all that is written. Alas for those who are with the child, and for those who give suck in those days. For great distress shall be upon the earth, and wrath upon this people. They will fall by the edge of the sword, and be led captive among the nations, and Jerusalem will be trodden down by the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And there will be signs in sun and moon and stars, and upon the earth distress of nations in perplexity, at the roaring of the sea and the waves, men fainting with the fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and with great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, look up, raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, this evening we have gathered around here to celebrate the fifth day of our novena in preparation for the feast of St. Francis Xavier. And the theme that we have chosen for today is Prophet of Justice to those bound by injustice. Our theme which is so relevant to the society that we are living in because often we cry for justice because at times or the other, all of us feel that we are bound by injustice. We want to be liberated. We want to be freed from injustice that binds us every moment of our life. And this theme, in fact, helps us, for us, the followers of Jesus, how we can be prophet of justice and how we can reach out to the people who are bound by injustice. In the introduction we heard, who is a prophet? No doubt, prophet is the one who is called by God from the people and is sent to the people. Yes, he is not one who is fallen down from heaven, no, or the, from the skies, no. He is chosen from the people and for the people and is sent to liberate the people from the bondage. And also, he is given a particular task, particular work, and that work is to announce and also to denounce. What he is supposed to be announcing is nothing other than the good news. He is supposed to announce the truth, supposed to announce the love, supposed to announce the compassion and mercy and the generosity of God. And what he is supposed to denounce is nothing other than the evil that is existing in the society. And he becomes a voice of the voiceless. He, in order to do that, what he requires is the courage. He has to be courageous in the face of adversities. He has to be courageous in the face of the hatred and the dislike that every prophet has to go through in his or in her life. Today, 
as we celebrate the fifth day of the Novena in preparation for the feast of St. Francis Xavier. It is fitting that we look at his life for a moment. Francis Xavier, no doubt, he is very much beloved to each and every one of us. Chosen from a far off land, sent into this land in order to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. That's the reason we say in modern times, he is the greatest missionary after St. Paul. Francis Xavier touched the lives of so many people through his missionary activities. When he was suddenly asked to go to India, his companion, the founder, Ignatius Loyola, what he told is, set, go, set all in fire. The fire of the good news, he was supposed to come here and set the world or set this part of the world. Francis Xavier, my dear sisters, reminds us that God can do a lot of good things when we allow him to work in and through us. Yes, God can do a lot of good things in and through us only when we allow him to work in us. And if you, do, if you want to do that, what is important for you and for me is to open up our heart, open up our mind. Then only God can work in and through us. And that is precisely Francis Xavier did in his life. He allowed God to work in and through in him. And Francis Xavier, no doubt, he was a great missionary in India as well as in Japan. So we should consider for a moment to look at his missionary duty as our duty, our prophetic duty, I would say, that which Francis did whenever and wherever he went. He lived with the people, he took on the lifestyle of the people, and he mingled with the people freely in order to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. And it is said, he spent countless hours preaching, teaching, and also taking care of the sick. Yes, he did that healing ministry which was so important of that time. And he said, very often he had very little time to spend time in prayer. And he was no doubt truly a prophet who was taken from the people for the people to reach out to their ills, to reach out in their uh, difficulties or what they needed in their life. Yes, my dear sisters and brothers, when you, grew through, when you go through the scriptures, we encounter number of prophets. And some of them, we call them as the prophets of soldier justice. And prophet Amos is considered as one of the great prophets of social justice because of the prophetic messages heavily focused on condemning the oppressing oppression of the poor and advocating for fairness and also justice among the people of Israel. Particularly, Prophet Amos went on to criticize the rich people or the wealthy people for exploiting the vulnerable, the downtrodden and the poor. And the famous verse from Prophet Amos is found in chapter 5, verses 24, where it says, but let justice roll down like the waters and righteousness like an overflowing river. But let the justice roll down like the waters and the righteousness like an overflowing waters. At the heart of the Amos' message, my dear brothers and sisters, is a call for each and every one to live a life of justice. Amos had a passion for justice and he was a prophet par excellence of social justice. Yes, my dear sisters and brothers, there are other prophets, no doubt, who also proclaimed 
what is important of the time to be just and also to be righteous we can find in the books of prophet mika or jeremiah or prophet isaiah for that matter but all these prophets my dear brothers and sisters are relevant not because they are realistic because they taught that the test of justice to our nation is how weakest are treated if you want to know how realistic is their teaching or the society is then we have to look at how the vulnerable and how the poor people are treated in the society justice means fairness justice means impartiality and justice means equal distribution of the rewards and also the punishments equally treating everyone regardless of their background while injustice refers to the absence of justice signifying very well the unfair treatment or a violation of someone's rights so whereas we have justice in the society taking place and also we have injustice taking place in every society all over the world today's gospel my dear sisters and brothers we heard jesus speaking to us about that future destruction of jerusalem the reason for the destruction of jerusalem is the pride and the arrogance and also the infidelity of the people towards god and their refusal to change a refusal to amend their lives amend their lives making use of this imagery jesus in fact speaks to us about his impending death impending suffering to the people the hearers as jesus says a prophet is not welcomed in his own hometown the prophetic call of jesus was not welcomed by the people they refused to accept him they refused to heed the voice or the call of jesus for a change of lifestyle or a change of heart jesus my dear sisters and brothers i warned the people against the oppression against the injustice against the sinfulness and also of the wicked so prophet we heard, we heard we said earlier is called by god for a mission he is called by god for a particular task to undertake in his life it is the god is the one who calls and is the god is the one who sends him or her to do the work that is assigned to the prophet and this prophet my dear sisters has to live among the people then only the prophet will understand the plight the difficulties that the people experience in their life so that he can undertake the task that god has assigned to the prophet and that this prophet has to speak on behalf of god a very very important task that prophet should be doing he speaks not of his own but he speaks on behalf of the behalf of god and his message is nothing other than the message of love the message of compassion and the message of healing and of nurturing my dear brothers and sisters you and me are called to be prophets at times or the other we may hesitate ourselves to accept that you and me are called to be prophets there is no need to hesitate ourselves because remember the time of your baptism after pouring water on you the priest who anointed you with the chrism oil he said i anoint you with the oil of salvation and he went on to say as jesus was a priest a prophet a king so may you also live always as a member of the body yes you and me are called to be partakers of that great task or the ministry 
to be the prophets because of a very fact you and me are baptized people so the role for you and to for me is to prophesy on behalf of god and also to do what god wants us to do in our life and one task that he wants you to do in your life and in my life is to proclaim justice to those who are bound by injustice yes my dear brothers and sisters all of us as I said have that prophetic call and we are the prophets and jesus shows us the way at times in our life we may not know what am i to do and how am i to do and where am i to do and it is the holy spirit that which we have received will direct our, our life direct our life and two important qualities that you and me need to possess and naturally we have it deep down within us the first thing is that we are called to be compassionate people that's the one of the wonderful quality that the prophet should have and when i have that compassion in my life i will be able to hear the cry of the people i will be able to hear people crying out for justice because they are pushed down by the injustice or a burdened by injustice i will be able to see the cry or the plight of the people in their lives and because of the compassion that i have or you have you will reach out to the people who are at the margins or who are at the peripheries of the society especially the poor especially the downtrodden in our very society or in our village and only when i have this compassion in my life my dear sisters and brothers i will be able to hear all of them equally if i don't have compassion i will become a very selective hearer i will hear what i want to hear and rest of the things i will be deaf to that i will see what i want to see for rest of the other things i will be a blind person yes only when i have that compassion the compassion of jesus i will be able to hear and see what god wants me to hear and what god wants me to see the second quality my dear sisters and brothers is a prophet has to be a courageous person and we know what is how and where i have to be courageous and this courage also goes along with the prudent or the prudence in my life i have to be courageous to raise a voice on their behalf yes that is the courage that i require because those downtrodden people suppressed people they don't have the courage so they require someone else to raise their voice so being a prophet you and me have to raise our voices on their behalf my just my dear brothers and sisters to be courageous is also to raise the voice against the people whose voices are suppressed or strangulated at times in their life in our life to be courageous is also means to raise the voice against the violence and the hatred that takes place in our homes in our society maybe in our village in our country yes i need to raise the voice against this and to be courageous also my dear sisters is to raise the voice against the environmental degradation that takes place all over the pollution maybe the noise pollution maybe the air pollution that or the water pollution that takes place yes the environmental degradation that takes place i need to raise my voice because my future generation can live in peace and in a very healthy climate at times my dear sisters and brothers i may say to myself look these things don't affect me i am not affected by the air pollution i am not affected by the noise pollution i am my voice is not suppressed neither i am strangulated but as a follower of jesus christ i am called to show my solidarity 
my oneness with the other who is downtrodden or one who is trampled upon trampled upon that's what jesus tries to tell us every moment whenever he says if you give a glass of cold water to a thirsty person you have given it to me i do it because of the love of jesus i do it because of the love of jesus so that together all of us can be free frederick gustav emil martin nemola a german theologian and a lutheran pastor he is best known for his opposition to the nazi regime during the late 1930s and he is well known for his widely recited poem which he wrote in 1946 the title of the poem is first they came first they came it goes like this my dear brothers and sisters he says first they came for the communists and i did not speak out because i was not a communist then they came for the socialites and i did not speak out because i was not a socialist then they came for the trade unionists and i did not speak out because i was not a trade unionist then they came for the jews and i did not speak out because i was not a jew then they came for me and there was no one left to speak out for me yes my dear brothers and sisters that can happen to you happen to me if we don't raise our voice if we don't show our solidarity with others when those things happen to us well there will be no other prophets to speak out and i will be downtrodden i will be trampled on because no one else is there to defend me or to raise voice for me yes my dear sisters and brothers if you refuse to accept the prophetic role of justice in our life we will be isolated by the others and and no one will be there to speak for us when when the need and the time comes let us not be selective hearers let us not be selective doers in our life but let us heed the voice of our master jesus christ who said the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring the good news to the poor he has sent me to proclaim the release of the captives and recover of a sight to the blind to let the oppressed go free luke chapter 4 verse 18 yes my dear brothers and sisters as we gather around this altar let us always remember the life of saint francis xavier and who converted a many people to the christian faith let us pray that we may have the conversion of our heart so that jesus may become the center of your life and of my life as francis after his conversion accepted the vocation of a priest and a missionary let us ask him to help us to know our vocation as a prophets of justice and help us always to bring the message of christ to a world crying out for freedom and for liberation amen brothers and sisters in the gospel of st matthew jesus christ says chapter 7 verse 7 ask and you shall receive seek and you will find knock and the door will be open to you let us place all our prayers and petitions to god the father our response lord hear our prayer Lord 
Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of the church may be the prophetic voice of the church, announcing the good news of hope and denouncing the evil in the society. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our political leaders, knowing that they have been elected from the community and being aware of the joys and sorrows, griefs and anxieties of the people, may work with enthusiasm and a dedication to fight the evil and unjust practices in the society. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that all the people of goodwill may tirelessly work for the cause of justice, thereby ensuring peace in the community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our that each one of us gathered here may be prophets of God's mercy, justice, truth, and love to our neighbors and those who come in contact with us every day. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Let us pause for a while and offer all our prayers. God, our Heavenly Father, I accept these prayers and the prayers of our heart. Fill us with your grace. Strengthen us. Strengthen our faith. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all holy church. Accept, O Lord, the sacred offerings which at your bidding we dedicated to your name, and in order that through these gifts we may become worthy of your love. Grant us unfailing obedience to your commands through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in His fullness. For those He was in the form of God, He emptied Himself and by the blood of His cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore, he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, 
and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take these, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Philip Neri, our bishop, Simeon Fernandes, auxiliary bishop, and all the clergy, the religious, and the faithful. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Francis Xavier, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
Truhe man with him and in him. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My dear brothers and sisters, while we greatly appreciate the presence of members of other faith at this Mass, we would like to remind you that only those who have received baptism in the Catholic Church may kindly come forward to receive, come forward to both the sides to the aisle to receive the Holy Communion. The others are requested to remain seated in prayerful solidarity. Catholic Dharmans and Bautisma so sacrament getlo lasa, fakta tanis komia gyon kyoche munam chivinonti. Catholic Dharma Made, Zani Baptisma Sanskar Getlala Ahe, Tianis Christa Prasad Svikarave. Jinone Catholic Kalisia Me Baptisma Sanskar Grahan Kiahe, Vehi Param Prasad Grahan Karne Kile Agiai. yourself in me, you will find yourself. Lose yourself in me, and you will find your life. Lose yourself in me, and you will find yourself. And you will live, yes, you will live. Oh, 
and dies, then it bears my fruit. So it is with those who lose themselves in me. close eyes and keep a moment of silence. Let us experience the presence of our Lord in our hearts. Kindly stand. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that those to whom you give the joy of participating in divine mysteries may never be parted from you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, kindly sit. We thank Father Anthony Soreng and our preacher, Father Reginald Di Mello, for preaching the word of God to us and the other priests who con celebrated in this Eucharistic celebration. We also thank those who conducted the choir for us. Now, during the exposition and the novenas of St. Francis Xavier, the mass timings are as follows morning 6, 7 15, 8 30, 9 45, and 11. And in the evening at 3.30, 5 and 6.15, the 6.15 Mass will be in English. Those who wish to do their confessions, priests will be available in the pendle to your left hand side from morning 5.30 a.m. to afternoon 12 p.m. And in evening 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. There is also a counseling center to your right. The timing says as follows, 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 and in the evenings, 3.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Tomorrow, the evening mass will be offered by youth, YCS, and YSM. On 30th of November is the Feast of St. Andrew, and this day is dedicated for consecrated men. The evening 3.30 mass will be presided over by our Archbishop. Kindly rise for the final blessings. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to, Lord. to God. Prayer to St. Francis Xavier all together. O devoted servant of God, St. Francis Xavier, your heart was burning with love for Jesus. Impelled by this love, you went from country to country and spent yourself unto death to proclaim the name of Jesus and the good news of salvation. That is why the Father filled you with glory in heaven and preserved your body from corruption here on earth. Filled with joy for these unique gifts, we join you in praising the Father. And now we ask your intercession for ourselves. Kindly put forth your personal petitions before our Lord. We ask you to obtain for us the fulfillment of these desires if they are pleasing to the Father. And for everything together with you we praise the Father through Jesus in the Spirit. Amen. and sisters, please note that clicking of photographs or recording videos of the sacred relics of St. Francis Xavier in say Cathedral is strictly prohibited. Veneration of the sacred relics of St. Francis Xavier will take place every day from morning 7 a.m. to evening 6 p.m. Tomorrow morning 8.30 Mass will be celebrated by Benaulin Dinari, 9.45 Mass by Mapsa Dinari, 11 a.m. Mass by Ponda Dinari, 5 p.m. Mass by Sangha Dinari. On the 30th of November, morning 8.30 Mass will be celebrated by Aldona Dinari, 9.45 Mass by Sheolim Dinari, 11 a.m. Mass by Old Goa Dinari, and 5 p.m. Mass by Margao Dinari. Tomorrow there will be a special Mass in Tamil at 12.15 at p.m. and on the 30th of November there will be Mass celebrated in Marathi at 12.15 p.m. Those who would wish to give flowers or contribute something towards the same, you may kindly do so in the Basilica control room or Basilica help desk. Please take care of your personal belongings. If anyone finds any lost items, kindly hand them over to the Basilica control room. In case of any complaint of mass timings or anything that you would like to clarify, kindly approach to the Basilica help desk. In the Basilica, light and sound exhibition as well as art gallery is open for public. The timings are from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. in the evenings. <laughs> 